<laughs> oh. <laughs> Hi. Hey everybody. How are you? Hi, I'm trending. Great. Shout out to the singing lady who I was uh, gate crashing before. Nice frozen singing. Hmm? Good. Hope you had a good day, said Gabby. Yep. I feel like we all just saw you. Yeah. Feels too soon. Maybe I should just cancel. Should I stop? Should I, should I just cancel today? Because I was in Phil's one, so. Just... Do no, no? Beth says no. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, tweet. Oh my god, what do I tweet? I hate this. I should just say the same thing every week and then I wouldn't have to have this. Uh, moral dilemma tweet. There we go. Did that work? Let's find out. Do do do. What tabs do I have open? Who knows? Probably something incriminating. La la la. Oh, there we go. Hi, everybody. Oh, I need to unmute myself because it does this every time. There we go. Hi, everybody. 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 Hi 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 everybody. Whoa! Enough of that. I did the bloody thing again where I can't read the chat because of the bloody gift box. What do I want to do? <laughs> I did it again. I was sending people presents in a previous chat and now I can't, okay, maybe I can type something into my own chat and then can I, can I give myself gifts? Gift rejected. You cannot gift yourself. Oh, I see how it is. Okay. Um, should I BRB so I can read more of the chat or deal with half of the chat for the next app? That'll be fun. Okay. So it's an eye test for Dan. How are all of you today? Bloody hell. What a horrible noise. What the hell was that? Did you hear that? Oh my god, it was like an eagle or something. That was monstrous. Um, tell me in one word how you are doing on this fine Tuesday on Earth. Amazing, said Madeline. Tired, said Princess KJ. Jet lag, said Jocelyn. <laughs> Lovely, said Luna Love. Horrible, said somebody whose name I couldn't read. Great, with a J, said George. I don't know entirely what that means. Uh, Sickish, said Kelsey. <laughs> ID... <laughs> <laughs> IDC, said Lena. Great. But, oh, I can read the chat on my Mac. Oh, it works. So I'm just going to have to, like, double double time it. There we go. That works. Awesome. Amazing, said somebody. Bored, said Minnie. Uh-oh. I hope that's not me. <laughs> Happy because I get to see your face. Oh, and someone said, I've got work in for it, but what do I look like? That's not great, is it? Uh, I haven't looked at myself today until I go live in front of 11.8 thousand people, but that's fine. That's What, what hats have I got near me? I've got a, <laughs> just, got, just got hats on my desk. Why have I got hats? I never wear hats. Uh, that, that's pretty cringeworthy. Okay, uh, what else do I have? That's, that's pretty, wow. Okay, an ironic swaggy. Are we gonna, are we gonna ironic swaggy? Two minutes into into the, into the show, <laughs> or sh shall we not? I'd rather I'd rather just adjust myself for two minutes than ironically swaggy so soon. So, um, wasn't here last Tuesday because the website broke. That happens. Sorry, uh, I was actually about to go out in the evening to the production company of the people that were helping to make our book reveal trailer. Um, to help to supervise the colour grading at 10pm. <laughs> so I was going to just do a uh, hang out with Dan while he cooks a quick dinner live show. So sorry that you all missed out on a rare Dan cooking tutorial last Tuesday, but that happens. Hopefully you saw me with Phil on Sunday. You should listen to the band Him, said Holly R. I used to. Have you ever been to Birmingham, said Rhea Tube. Uh, only as a, a train stop. Wow, Dan, what a cool guy, thank you. Yeah, this, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's a good hashtag, isn't it? Hi, Dan. Hi, Sam. Opinion on the F1 race. Okay, let's not, let's not, that's like a, that's definitely like a half an hour in topic because no one wants to hear me talk about motorsport at all. So, uh, what's happened today? I spent 
I just watched an episode of Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. You know, the uh, Amy's Baking Company one. It's good. It's a good episode of TV. If you guys know what I'm talking about, the... Uh, the crazy, well, I don't know, like, is it offensive? Are they crazy or are they just passionate about their restaurant? They're probably a bit crazy. Um, hey, if you haven't seen it, go to YouTube and just type in Amy's Baking Company because I'm sure like a million people have uploaded it. It's the best episode of Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares ever. It's very funny and she's mental. Um, so that's fun. It's very windy. Uh, all of my books got blown off my windowsill, um, which is very annoying because I've put them all in height order. <laughs> So then I had to rearrange them. Very windy. Windy as heck at the moment in London. Don't know what that's about, to be honest. Dude, that ep is my fave. Is it, Benji? High five. I've done that. It was windy for me, too, in Leicester. The wind was so strong, it blew my dog over. Did it? Did it? Did it really? Or are you just saying that? <laughs> it blew your dog over. That's intense. When will worldwide... Okay, okay, so... So, we'll, we'll approach things one topic at a time, because I haven't seen you guys in like a week and a half. And a couple interesting things have happened. Um, I ordered PJ's card game and then realised that Phil had, so I uh, had to cancel that. <laughs> but Phil got it as well. That's quite exciting. Might play it this weekend. Plans, apparently. Who knows? Uh, why were you tired earlier, said Stephen. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys get like mid-afternoon sleepiness after lunch like do you get do you get a bit like re do you get like really like oh my god i could nap so hard right now just after you've eaten lunch because like <laughs> i've been eating quite healthily the first half of this year but then any exercise that i started in january uh and the first half of february completely went out the window as I had to finish writing the book and planning all of this bloody insane trailer and stuff like that. So I haven't been eating or sleeping or going outside or anything for about a month. So my body, I'm very weak at the moment. And so I'm, I'm not moving. My body's not very strong because I'm just kind of typing all the time. And then I'm just having like salads for lunch. So then today I had like a freaking giant sandwich and I had like a dense ciabatta like, it was a, it was a big sandwich, and when I was eating it, I was like, this is dense, this is an intense sandwich. And then, like, half an hour later, I was just like... <laughs> I felt really heavy, and I was like, I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it during the... Uh, uh, um, yeah, so, uh, be lucky I'm here, because I could be sleeping right now, like a cat. Review Dead Inside. It's okay. The new music... The Ultimate Nessie is apparently my number one fan, according to a pop-up. Hi, The Ultimate Nessie. Who else? Who else is there? Anahita, and Mozita Dinosaur, and Liz Chapu, and Mary Johnston. Hi, guys. Lexi P said, I ordered your book. That's cool. You went to uni with someone from North Carolina, said Covers by Laurie. I went to university with two people from North Carolina, because University of Manchester is twinned with what I'm guessing is called the University of North Carolina. So we had a couple of exchange students. They were cool guys. Da, 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 ba, 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 ba. What were we talking about like two minutes ago? I've already like attention span of a brick. Bread. <laughs> That's fun. I'll have you. Okay, right, right, right. We'll get we'll get on to things. Priorities. Just dance. Who saw my and Phil's just dance video on Danifil Games? It happened. It happened. Sorry it took so long. Now you know what we were busy with, <laughs> handing in a book <laughs> to a publisher and, and editing a trailer that was the biggest thing ever, uh, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like it could have been a lot more embarrassing than it was. I feel like the trick is confidence. I feel like if you're aware of how awkward you are when, cause like you don't wanna, you don't wanna actually try to dance. Maybe some of you do, because, like, you, you, you have self-confidence and self-worth and stuff like that. But, you know, most of us people, you know, just, just hate ourselves. Um, you, that you wouldn't ever try to, like, unironically dance, because that's, like... <laughs> but, like, if you confidently don't take the dancing seriously, then it doesn't seem that embarrassing. So that's a little nugget of wisdom for you. If you're doing something that you know is very embarrassing, appear to do it confidently, and it looks like, you know, you're okay with it. 
I wasn't okay with it. It was it was just embarrassing. How is your hand from Phil whacking you? <laughs> Said somebody. I'm sure there's a, there's a slight bruise there somewhere. Violence, really? I mean, like proper. I don't know if you've seen it. But there was a bit in this video playing Just Dance with Wemo. It's Phil proper whacked my hand because it was a proper like here I go point like on the knuckles. It hurt. <laughs> Couldn't, couldn't take a moment to dwell on that, because I was trying to win. Priorities. Winning, always. Uh, if you haven't seen it, pretty funny video. Um, what's it, <laughs> what's it called? <laughs> Dan and Phil Games is our gaming channel. Uh, meeting you in Leeds, be ready. Are you seeing us in Leeds? Suki, pe Suki lives. See you there. Say hi to the banter bands. Hello, from Neve. Do you like gorillas? I love gorillas. They're one of my favourite bands. Updates on nicer internet. I am still working with people from Radio 1 and stuff. Don't worry, there are plans. Probably in May? When's that? Other side of April. Boo, boo, boo. The Walking Dead. Tour. But, okay. One at a time. Uh, so, go watch our Just Dance video. That's pretty fun. Oh my god. While we're here, who saw the weird title thing that happened on <laughs> the internet yesterday? The, the like, Jay-Z and people's Spotify competitor thing. I'm sure like lots of you have like heard it now because it's like trending and stuff but like how many- uh, me and my friends, if you don't know, basically loads of musicians such as Jay-Z and Beyonce and Kanye West and Arcade Fire and Daft Punk and Calvin Harris and Coldplay and Jack White and some guy from a country band with a big hat and Madonna and Nicki Minaj and Usher and J. Cole. Is that everybody? Wow, I'm lame. Um, They've, like, a bunch of artists have made, like, a new Spotify, and the point of it is that it's, like, really high-quality sound. Uh, okay, I guess. Uh, but <laughs> the other point is, like, it's about giving the artists the money they deserve, and there's been a lot of cynicism about that, because it's like, oh yeah, because Jay-Z needs more money, as opposed to the entrepreneurs that created Spotify. But I guess if you're an artist that isn't necessarily already rolling in cash like Beyonce, and you're more like an indie band, then it would be good if a streaming service gave the artists more money rather than the company. So I like the idea of it, but either way, uh, there was this weird live stream where they all came- I mean, my friends were watching it live last night, <laughs> before we watched The Walking Dead, and we were all like, what the fuck is happening? Like, well, who are all these people lined up on this stage? It was so weird. Like, I can't be like, it was cool, I guess, but it was so weird and awkward, and everyone was just stood there awkwardly, and it just didn't seem like the people that planned it really thought, like, will this look awkward if everybody is literally just stood there in silence, not talking to each other for ten minutes? So I can't believe that so many super famous musicians that have so much control over their time and, you know, what they do, did something that was so awkward. I don't know, it was a bit weird. And then, like, they played the national anthem by Radiohead while they were all signing some like weird Illuminati Magna Carta thing, and which is literally like a dystopian government. The whole thing was weird, but okay, yeah, let's see. Let's see if that's good or not. Spotify update. My Spotify update would just be Chopin at the moment because I've I've been buying a lot of music. Uh, all the best music in the world has come out in like the last two weeks. So much to talk about. So much to talk about. Uh, say a title. That was weird. Congrats on the book and tour, said Gabby. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so that happened. Sorry if you were all... Sorry if it was too much of a surprise. If you're wondering what the hell we've been doing recently, but... For like, for like a good seven, eight months, we have been writing this book and, you know, all, you know, during the whole Dan and Phil Sim thing in December, we were planning loads of the tour stuff because all that stuff has to be decided way in advance. And then in January, we did the Brits and then in February, we did Playlist Live and then the nicer internet thing and then the Brits. And then we had to hand in our book, like, three weeks later. The last five months of my life have been the most insane five months in our entire lives. Um, and March was when we had to hand in the book. And I, I, I don't, I'm honestly, like, this, this last week, since the weekend, and this Monday and Tuesday, 
I've just been completely exhausted. It's really weird just because <laughs> we've been working on this huge thing in secret for so long. Like this book is, it's the best thing that we have ever made. We've put more time and creative juice and passion into it than anything. And not just like the amount of work, but the quality of it. Like obviously I'm, I'm gonna say this and you're not gonna find out for six months, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much. But uh, honestly, it's the best thing we've ever done. I poured heart and soul into it. I think that the week we had to hand it in, I, I did three nights in a row where I was up till 5 a.m rereading the entire thing from front to back, changing like any single word that I didn't think was absolutely perfect. And then immediately, once we handed in the book, they were like, and now we've decided that we should announce it in like three weeks. And we were like, what? So then the last three weeks were just doing this trailer because, you know, we, we care about this book so much that we didn't, not that there's anything wrong with just, you know, sitting on a bed and going, I've got a book, but we wanted to do something a bit, you know, different and epic. And we, I explained in the explanation video the, the nostalgic, romantic idea behind the book. You know, the, the whole point was, it, it didn't necessarily have to be a book, but, you know, just thinking about Dan and Phil and all of the people out there that are Dan and Phil fans. I just wanted to make something that was not just, you know, little videos here and there, but just like to make something that was like the best thing. So I always felt like we did it justice so that like there was this Dan and Phil thing once and then we made this amazing thing and it was good. And then the tour is just, you know, us thinking about like, what's the best thing? You know, we've done the radio show, we've done the super amazing project, we've done videos together. But if me and you, Phil, what, what is our maximum potential? What is the best thing that we could possibly create together? And that's why we want to do the tour, to just absolutely make the best Dan and Phil thing ever. Uh, anyway, waffle. Uh, so yeah, and then like, it was all leading up to that Thursday. And now that it's just out there, like, I don't know how to live <laughs> anymore. Because it was just like 24-7. And now it's like, it's over for six months and everybody knows our secret until it's out. And it's just so weird now. I'm like, what do I, what's my purpose in life? Strange. Um, will you come to the US? Yes. When will the worldwide pre-orders be out? In a couple of weeks, obviously, as you can imagine, getting book things around the world is a very complicated process. So uh, that's happening eventually. Just dance before I move on. I ordered the Connect version, right? And I swear to God, I am gonna get five stars on Toxic and take a picture just to prove to you. <laughs> that I can. I'm not saying this is gonna be a video because <laughs> I don't. Wanna, I don't want to try too hard on camera, but I will. I'll, I'll just do it. I'm doing it for myself because I'm like, was it the Wii or was I just bad at the game? I don't know. So I, I bought Just Dance three for the Connect. <laughs> <laughs> and downloaded Toxic, and that's what I'm going Please make the video, I don't know, no, I'm sure there's dill, there's dill to be filmed, guys. <laughs> Maybe, but more Sims first. It's good exercise. My arms hurt. <laughs> I'm not even joking. This is going to sound really sad, slash distressing, my personal health. But um, my limbs were literally aching the day after Just Dance, because we've just done so much, like, wild flailing that I was like, oh, you know when you get like exercise muscle cramps, I was like, oh my god, I've just been sat at this desk typing for the last two and a half months, I haven't moved, <laughs> and all of a sudden I'm going, oh, yeah, crazy. Anyway, that was an attractive face I just pulled, wasn't it? Sassy hand, sexual moan. It's very, very quotatious, wasn't it? Did you see the new Halo trailer, said Lexi? I did. Ooh, Spartan or Chief? Whose side are you on? I really need to replay Halo 4 because I don't remember it at all. I've got the Master Chief collection, so I need to do that at some point. <laughs> Me, free time. Um, ba -ba -ba, ba -da -ba -da, ba -ba 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 -ba. They're coming for you. They are coming for me. Who's they? <laughs> do, do I want to know? <laughs> oh, um, I'm sorry if you felt like in the... And that, you know, the explanation video when we were on our gaming channel so far that we were being a bit too happy and excited and I wasn't being sarcastic enough. We filmed it at like 3am and we were insane and we hadn't slept in like three weeks. Don't worry, the book is not 
too kiddy or cringeworthy. Not, you know, we're not kiddy or cringeworthy. The book is good. The book is immensely sarcastic. And if you if you like my writing and you know things like, you know, the internet is mean or the story of my hamster, it's good. It's everything that's top quality down in Phil. Don't worry. If you're 40, you could read the book and still have a lol. So don't worry. Trust us. Trust us. <laughs> we, we're good. We do good things. <laughs> I'm afraid of tsunamis, said somebody. What's that? Naughty boy and Louis and Zane. So that happened, didn't it? <sighs> wow. So... Right. Zane leaving One Direction... Uh, is obviously very sad for One Direction fans and for like the purity and the the nostalgic memories of One Direction never being the same unless they reunite at some point. Um, but you, you like you have to people you know sh people should be happy and if Liam is happy being in One Direction because one day he wants to be like the Gary Barlow in the Take That I think he's very happy with that and you know maybe Harry could go do some stuff and Niall could go do some stuff. The thing is like, I think we'd all want One Direction to have solo careers but still be part of One Direction, you know what I mean? I don't know, like, I feel like Robbie and Gary Barlow can have their own music where they nail what they want to but then come together to just do like great boy band pop or whatever, in case he just thought that the whole thing was like really sincere, but I, I'd really... I'd happily let Zayn do his music and, you know, Liam do Liam music and Harry do Harry music. Doesn't mean One Direction has to die. But, yeah, so, uh, you know, if Zayn was... I think, like, do you remember the ep do you remember the video where Louis and Zayn were in the car after they were... <coughs> um, and Zayn was looking through a photo book and Zayn was like, the fans don't like things being so kiddie. They, you know, they would appreciate something a bit cooler and a bit deeper where we, like, talk about more stuff, but they keep making everything so kiddie. And I think, like, it's okay, but, I don't know, maybe... maybe you understand why Zayn, he wanted to, like, really kind of do cool stuff. And Naughty Boy is a great producer, makes bloody great music. So the idea of Zayn making his own music, with Naughty Boy being a producer, love the idea of that immensely. I'm really embarrassed on behalf of Zayn that Naughty Boy is being so kind of dramatic. You know what I mean? Because it could have, like, there was nothing bad about the situation. You know what I mean? There was nothing... There's nothing bad about Zayn doing solo music. Uh, and then obviously like you have all these fans being really hysterical and stuff like that. But then Naughty Boy just kind of like acted like there was all of this drama. And even though he was just saying like, forget all the haters, there's all positivity and stuff. Like he should have just like not said anything. Like if I was Zayn, I would have been like, this is a sensitive moment. So you need to be like, just don't talk about anything, but like, oh my god, like, Naughty Boy is just, like, causing so much drama, and then <laughs> fucking, ah, oh, Louis Tomlinson, he's just, <laughs> pop onto Twitter, cause a sh for, like, well, biggest shitstorm in the universe, how are you doing, bye, poof, there we go, Pff, whatever, whatever, it's none of my business, it's too much, I have too many things to think about than to worry about what One Direction are up to, but anyway, whatever, whatever. It's not a serious business either way, as it's not life or death, so... Who minds? Get off Twitter and just wait for music to happen. That'll be fun. It's a good, it's, it's a good mor moral generally, isn't it? Just get off Twitter and just wait for the thing. <laughs> Play FIFA, said Izzy. That would be a terrible idea. No one wants to see that. <laughs> do do do. What's the video about your trailer? Oh, what that we said on Sunday. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Was it Tamar? No. Um, yeah, like, the, the story of our trailer, it's quite interesting. Because obviously, like, our plan was to just kind of, like, beyond say it without saying anything. And just let people, like, freak out for a day and then explain it. Um, <laughs> which was funny. Sorry if it was too surprising. Uh, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, the trailer. Uh... But that meant that it was a bit confusing. People didn't really know what, what it was. Basically, like, the trailer was my idea. Uh, and I came up with, like, the script and everything that was going to happen. And then I went to our book publishers. And I was like, please pay to make this really amazing thing. And they were like, okay. And I was like, what? I expected you to say no. Um, but they said yes. And they hired this really, really incredibly 
slightly, I was a bit scared when I met, it was a, people called Ralph and Co, but they do like TV adverts and stuff like Breaking Bad and stuff like that. So when it was, we I found out it was those guys that were gonna be the people helping me make this trailer. I was like, they're too good. They're too good. I'm scared. So I worked with a, um, a professional director who knows how to do things like choosing shots and lenses and stuff like that. And I was like, here's my idea. And we spent like, like weeks like planning it and talking about it and casting the people and scouting locations and drafting like ho sketches of the holographic news and stuff like that like I I'm a bit of a control freak some would say perfectionist I prefer that one every single frame of that trailer was me going it has to be exactly like this um, many sleepless nights but I will say that that trailer that we ended up with was absolutely perfect. When I had like the moment of inspiration when it popped into my head, what we ended up with was like ideal. And there's so much, it's such an interesting story. And like I could go through every single moment of that trailer and talk about why I made those decisions. And Phil was like, why don't we do like a silly director's commentary, like a DVD <laughs> bonus thing? Might go on, Dan's not interesting, don't know, we'll see where to go. That's not a promise, by the way, just an idea we've had. We might start making it, and then realise it's a terrible idea. Uh, but we'll see. The book isn't out until October, and there's a lot to talk about. Um, so we don't want to do, do it all now. But yeah, I guess the trailer's, trailer's relevant for a short amount of time, so we'll do that. What's Phil's Myers-Briggs type? No idea. Has he ever taken it? Probably. I think Phil's like, oh, I don't understand the question. I can't be bothered. I'll just use this one. It's like, no, Phil, you're not QQXT. Ugh. Joking. <laughs> I would have liked the second vid a bit quicker, though. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. Another thing. I will say, some people appreciated the surprise, but didn't like that we didn't give them any notice in case, you know, their parents weren't around that particular day or they couldn't gather friends quickly enough and then the thing was all sold out. So, me and Phil have spent the weekend and today talking with people and we are trying to organise more tour dates for the UK and we definitely want to do that because we, we agree, we want to give you guys time. The surprise was fun but it would have been good if you had time so we're going to look uh, at getting more dates. Probably in a, I'm, a couple days, we'll probably work out where and we can give you the dates, but then we'll give you a week until they're on sale. So um, we're still working it out. In a couple days, we'll tell you when and where and all that stuff. And then you have like a week before they'll be on sale at lunchtime or something. So that should be good and an obvious thank you to everybody that comes. Trust us, you are gonna have a great time we have a lot of ideas. It's going to be very fun. <laughs> it's going to be very fun. Will you come on tour in the US? We want to go on tour all over the world because the point is to make this best Dan and Phil thing ever and to give the most people an opportunity to see it. So I'm sure it's going to be a long and complicated process, but we absolutely want to go across Europe and America and probably, maybe, hopefully, Australia, and maybe some other places. Uh, that's not a promise, because <laughs> unfortunately me and Phil, <laughs> other people need to help us do those things, but absolutely want to. Will you vlog it? We will be sure to chronicle our Dan and Phil tour. Do not worry. Like we have been with the book. We've, um, yeah, like, bloody hell, that's going to be a, a job, doing that whole book thing. Here's me at the... Uh, the editing studio of the uh, book trailer talking about how the the thing should be edited. I'm like, no, why did it back to you? There's, there's, it's just really interesting. It's cool. What other little <laughs> random ones are there? I'm looking now. Oh yeah, that's us uh, on set. I think that is there at the trailer. You see me looking at the monitors and stuff. It's going to be cool. But it's all on f uh, phones, so it's probably going to be rubs. <laughs> Are you friends with Felix, aka PewDiePie? Yes, but I don't see him enough. Um, I need to be braver and ask to socialise with people more. Do you, do you guys feel the same? Do you have friends that you're like, we could be better friends, but I'm too scared to ask to hang out with you. That's like me with every single person I know. <laughs> 
Uh, when is the when is it coming out? Well, well, we're thinking like we could have we could do this now, but like the journey of the book isn't over yet, so we're gonna keep that. We're gonna keep telling the story until like the day it comes out, maybe or something. That would be quite cool. Ba 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 da ba. New Dill video. Yep, that'll be the next Downfall Games video. We'll do that soon. D W. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Did you ever imagine writing a book? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I would have never presumed before. I had any of my YouTube success that I would ever have the opportunity to. I'm very hashtag blessed. <laughs> Slash grateful and lucky. Um, yeah, well, I mean, all of my videos are, are writing, really, so books are just kind of a, a means of creative expression that allow people to spend a very long time making something. You know? That's why, that's why books are books, because you have creative people or celebrities that just have like interesting life stories if they want to just do autobiographies but it's just a like a video or a tv series or a, or a movie uh, or a graphic novel it's just a a form of creative expression that allows people to do something physical uh that's also creative expression the dan and phil book might not have even been a book <laughs> it just turned out that we thought that would be the best thing to to do it do you like Merlin? I I watched like the first, I don't even remember Merlin. I think I started watching it like when it first came out and then I, was it when I was at uni? I don't remember. I didn't have a license fee, so I couldn't legally watch BBC content. And I was really afraid that uh, I was going to get my door busted down by the BBC police. Mm -mm -mm. Have you seen the Justin Bieber roast? I haven't. Is that on the, oh my God, I should see that. What was that like? Have you guys, have you guys seen that? Justin Bieber roast. Did you guys watch it? Uh, no, it was hilarious. It was hilarious. It was so funny. It was so funny. It was hilarious. Are you saying that as people that love Justin Bieber or hate Justin Bieber? I'd be interested to know. Or somewhere in between. Kevin Hart was hilarious as per. Yep, Favelina. <laughs> Did you see him on a roller coaster with Jimmy Fallon? Or was it Jimmy Kimmel? I don't remember. I can't tell the difference between them. It's too confusing. Both shouldn't exist in the same universe. Opinions on Dead Inside! Colon slanty face said someone. Sorry, I didn't get your name. Um, yeah, Dead Inside. Okay. So, I haven't listened to it enough. I will say the good songs, you can love them on the first time you listen to them. You know? Uh, the first time I ever listened to Hysteria. The first time I ever listened to Supermassive Black Hole, I was like... What's this crazy music? Um, rude. What is that about? Um, first time I listened to Undisclosed Desires, I was like, damn, this is so funky, I love it. First time I heard Dead Inside, I was like, mm, mm, I don't, I'm not. <laughs> you can see how terrified I am of ever expressing a negative opinion. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know if I have a negative opinion. I haven't listened to it enough. But one thing I will say is that, you know, you can... It's towards the recent end of their career, you can criticise Muse's lyrics um, and, you know, various aspects of them, but they're never boring. You know, you listen to Origin of Symmetry and Absolution and Black Holes and Revelations, and it's just so exciting. Muse, past, I mean, like, Showbiz, maybe they sounded a bit like Radiohead. Origin of Symmetry, maybe they had a lot in common with, like, Radiohead, Placebo, some of the poppier Nine Inch Nails stuff that was going on at that point in time. But I'd say, you know, Absolution was quite poppy, um, but like definitely bought bits of all those and Black Hearts and Revelations, no band in the world sounds like Muse, because they're just in space, they make space music, so, you know, it's always an opportunity for them to have an amazing guitar riff, to do something really cool, something amazing sounding, so like, to have a bridge in their new single that has like the basic four chord progression on a guitar for like 25 seconds, I was like, what the has a YouTube. <laughs> I'm like, you could have done anything. Why did you waste my time going? But not hating, waiting for the album. No opinion until I hear the album. Then we'll see. Opinions on To Pimp a Butterfly, said Patty Mariam. Are you ready? <laughs> Ooh, here's one Kendrick Lamar. New album, To Pimp a Butterfly. I mean, that's a 10 out of 10, isn't it? It's a 10 out of 10. Just straight up. I'm sorry. 
I can't believe how many people find that like a Jimmy rustling opinion. I don't know why. I think that people either like just don't like the kind of early noughties, nineties inspired music or it's too dense for them or for, you know, for whatever reason. But like, I don't know, it's a 10 out of 10, isn't it? Really, truly, it's all I've been listening to since I came out. I've been listening to <laughs> Chopin on Spotify when I've not been in the mood for listening to music with lyrics. Um, you're offline, rude. Um, and then just Kendrick, my, uh, my piano player of choice is Irina Bodognova, because um, I'm very picky about people who play it wrong, and she's good. Uh, yeah, Kendrick Lamar, uh, favorite songs, just going to talk about this for a while and self-indulge myself. Um, Wesley's Theory, Jesus bloody hell, what an amazing, first time I heard Wesley's Theory, like my brain melted out of my ears, and I was just like, the thing, you need to listen to the album a few times, because at the first it was really overwhelming, and there were so many songs, and a few of them sounded quite similar, and it was it was just a lot, a lot to digest, but it was just every time I listened to it, the more familiar I got with every song on the album, just, now I've listened to it to like 20 times, every single song is a great song, it is so good, it's so good, and it's like, if Drake's if you're reading this too late, came out after Kendrick's album. Can you, um, like, can you, like, I, I am so happy for J. Cole and Drake and Big Sean for releasing the albums before Kendrick, because if they came after Kendrick, they would have just looked ridiculous. Because <laughs> I know Drake's album was just a mixtape, but still, you know what I mean? When people are making such, like, pop contemporary music designed to be popular or whatever, and then, oh my god, Oh, it would. I'm feeling bad for Kanye. Like I'm really, like Earl Sweatshirt released his album. That I haven't op hadn't had the opportunity to get into really yet. And it's like it's you know he's quite different, so it's not like they're competing. But I've, I'm feeling scared for Kanye because it's like Kanye releasing his album after Kendrick released his album. I don't. Know, how would you feel about that? I don't know, man. Anyway, <laughs> so that's that. Anime, um, did I tell you I finished your line, April? Cried like a motherfucker. Um, best anime. Bloody hell. I think I did say this last time I did a live show. Oh my god, your line, April, was perfect. It was perfect. You can't compare it to Full Metal Alchemist or Death Note because it's just a shoujo about, you know, kids in high school playing the piano. But just, it was, I can't, I could just go on this for hours. It was just so good. Just the, the writing, the directing, the composing, the animation, the way that all of those things blended together. The, sh the show was music constantly. It wasn't just a sh like people scenes and people talking. It's like everything was like composed and orchestrated and everything like emotionally built up and the animation and like the soundtrack it would just like I'm talking about an anime called Your Lie in April that's life ruining uh, and it was great I'm watching Cowboy Bebop now uh, which is bloody awesome wow the thing is I got a bit like all of the animes I've been watching recently are designed for 13 year old girls not that there's anything wrong about 13 year old girls it just means that all the characters are 13 so I was a bit like what am I missing out on? Uh, for a reason, <laughs> you'll find out about. I wanted to uh, make sure that I'd seen all the best animes of all time, which is why I watched Evangelion. And another one was like, you need to watch Cowboy Bebop. So uh, bought it on Blu-ray and it's awesome. Oh my God, the theme tune sounds like something out of Whiplash. What an amazing song. And it's just so, <sighs> like, I'm watching all these animes and they're all the same and they're all just, part and then it, you see other things. They're like, this isn't just an anime, this is like, one of the best shows that Japan must have ever created, regardless of whether it's a freaking cartoon or not. It's just so incredible. Um, please listen to MGMT. I did listen to MGMT like six years ago. <laughs> um, not really keeping up with them anymore. Sorry. Five Sauce or 1D? Uh, I have nothing against Five Sauce, but I guess I have, I have more emotions over 1D. <laughs> Honestly. 
Talk about F1. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. You all hate my interests, but that's what that's what these live shows are. They're just casual, boring conversation for me to pretend like I have friends to talk about my interests with. Um, what an amazing race. Oh my god. Like, I feel kind of bad for Mercedes that they didn't win their Patronus race in Patronus land with their Patronus sponsors. Because, like, me the Mercedes team is sponsored by this petrol company called Patronus, and they were in Malaysia which is like a country that's owned by this company Patronus and the entire Grand Prix was sponsored by it. So I imagine that they had like so much riding on winning with like a one, two finish and they didn't. So I like, I feel bad for this terrible capitalist oil company that's destroying, <laughs> that's destroying the world. Um, but uh, bloody hell, Vettel in the Ferrari, the Italian and German anthem, German and Italian back to back. I didn't like Michael Schumacher's dominance because my family was a McLaren family and we liked Jensen Button and whatever. So it used to be like the ugh, but like I was, I was tearing up. I was, ugh, I nearly cried. I was so emotional. Bloody hell, what an amazing sport. Oh my God, great. Formula One, good competitive sport exciting to watch cars crash into each other and stuff but then the culture and the drama around it in the community so exciting oh my god anyway, um yeah if you were a fruit you'd be a fine apple said heather thanks i bought a ticket for the tour thank you cheerful lester do you still play your piano i do i closed it because i was <laughs> i was filming a dance on fire video and it was echoing because i was being too uh loud I was like, hey guys, and it was like, hey, hey, hey. so I was like, slam. Uh, and I also realized that most people close their piano lids so they don't get dusty, because uh, I often have to dust my piano. Oops. Sorry that I shook your hand at playlist, did you? That's okay, that's, that's like something I do. Say hi to Kaylee and Holly. Hi guys. I see the, oh wait, no, I haven't scrolled back. Mozzie the dinosaur, the ultimate nerd. RHR, hey, Anahita, and. Bo three scr are my top fans. Can people not? Rude. New Dance on Fire video. Uh, yep. I mean, like the <laughs> the whole like fucking book thing is kind of new. I'll probably uh, probably sometime early next week. I've got a video in the bag. It's a good one. Spoilers. I'm uploading it on Monday or Wednesday. I need to decide. Dan, Dan, Dan. Hi, Anahita. Leeds Fest. I'd probably go to Reading if I was going to. Kendrick at a music festival. That have a listen to Kendrick letting us. <laughs> I have a driving test on Thursday. Help. Good luck, Natalie. Stay calm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Radio show on Monday. Bloody hell, I keep forgetting that, don't I? <laughs> Need to prepare for that. Do you watch any K drama? I don't. Should I? Opinions on Harry Styles' man bun. I don't have a problem with man bun as a hairstyle. I feel like people either find it, like, over-explodingly attractive or disgusting. Are you- what, what side of the fence are you, regardless of gender or whatever? Man buns. Yay or nay. <laughs> quick, quick survey. Nauseating. <laughs> I like the first opinion. Disgusting. Hot, cute. Nope, nope. Depends, ew. Beautiful, they are live. Don't really like them, says Blunt, of course. Disgusting, Beth. Kaylee, nah. I thought you said gay or nay. <laughs> who, div who gives a duck? True, depends. Indeed. I have to clean a toilet today. Oh dear. That ain't good. Cleaning toilets isn't actually that bad. Um, it's a lot easier than, like... Cleaning is easier than tidying. You know, It's like, you know when you've got just, like crap all over your desk, like bits of paper and stuff, and you're like, oh, wh wh where did all this random crap come from, and where does it go? Like, tidying is stressful. Cleaning's not that stressful, because you just have to kind of, like, wipe stuff. You know? <laughs> the way he said, oh dear, what? <laughs> how did I say it? <laughs> I'm gonna regret that. But, 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 why are you broadcasting and not relaxing? This is relaxing. I need an opportunity to get out all of my irrelevant thoughts that I don't think are relevant enough to tweet to loads of people. Why am I singing the Crash Bandicoot theme? Are you going to watch Justin Bieber's roast, said Rachel. Yeah, I think I should. I just I just tabbed it. 
I'm going to meet you at Brighton. That should be fun. <laughs> well, no. We'll invite all of our friends and they'll say no. Uh, you, did you watch the final season of Glee? No. I stopped watching when they went to New York. What's your Myers-Briggs? Last time I took it, I was an INFJ, but I changed my mind every time I answer the questions. And it's, I freak out too much. I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to click this one or this one. It's not a perfect system. Walking Dead. That's the other thing that happened, Jesse. Ah. How good is The Walking Dead at the moment? Like, the first episode was okay, and then the barn episode with the rain, Phil hated it. He said it was like the worst episode of anything he'd ever watched. Um, <clears throat> I appreciated the, the symbols, but so good. So all of Alexandria has been... I'm not going to spoil it. Ben said muting to it, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's just so good. Ah. <sighs> I think we were all just a bit tired of them walking around in the woods, and Alexandria is a really good setting, and it's got loads of drama. I mean, the last episode, you all know how we felt about that one, bloody hell, but then this one is so good. <laughs> ah, it's a good show, isn't it? So many mysteries. What's with the W's? Um, have I watched Gotham? Not yet. Sorry. You seem hyper. I have to be a bit hyper, or everyone thinks I'm bored and sad. If I'm just like... Hey guys, so, I mean, yeah, you want to talk about this? I was like, Dan looked really sad today. No. <laughs> never, never overanalyze any of my emotions or behavior during this. It's a very weird situation. <laughs> Hi to Maria and Jordan. Hi. What should I name my fish? Jonathan the Minnow, regardless of species. Wow, Dan, what a mean guy. Should that be my uh, hashtag next week? Love you so much. Thanks, Jasmine. That's nice. Have a nice day. That's awesome. Thanks, Abby. Dan, you scared me. Sorry, Emily. Do, do, do. Sing you in Glargo. Glargo. Glasgow. Glargo. Favourite Mario Kart course. Grumble Volcano. I don't care who you are. You will not beat me at Grumble Volcano. Just not happening. I have never not come first on Grumble Volcano online. <laughs> I think it's like... I just love the music. This is, all of these things are so specific. Like, no one cares about any of these. <laughs> I'm like, I should just, I should just talk about, like, One Direction, myself, and general relatable life topics. That's, that's what 13,000 people could be interested in. No one cares about motorsport, or Kendrick Lamar, or Mario Kart. Uh, anyway. Grumble Volcano, love it, favourite track. I always whack up the music, and I, like, cross my legs, and I'm like, I fucking do this. Um, so I think it's mainly about me just... Trying harder, like a nerd. <laughs> Any new tour dates, Dan? Yes, Jazz. Um, we're thinking of some. So we're going to... Thursday or I have no idea. Uh, we're going to tell you which ones we're thinking of doing, and then we're going to give you guys a week's notice uh, before they go on sale. What is that picture behind you on that one? It's a caricature of me and Justin Bieber. I still have my red noses. Is my room a bit of a mess? Sorry. My whole life has gone out of the window. What is sleep? I don't know. Um, <laughs> mm, 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 mm. How do I get you to notice me? By pasting an emoji octopus in the chat, apparently. Is the lipstick gone? I think I just turned it upside down. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> uh, that's, that's another thing on my list of things to do when I get my life back on track. Replace my bed sheets. That are Does that mean I'm like rubbing lipstick against my feet when I sleep? Probably. Great. Death Grips new album. Jenny Death. I don't know why um, both of those albums are part of the powers that be. They don't seem particularly related. I think I would have preferred them separately. Uh, or whatever. Um, Jenny Death, pretty good. Pretty good. What's your shirt? It's a moth that looks... It's, well, rather, it's a skull made out of moths. Pretty cool.